Hey guys, this week Jordan and I had pretty in-depth stories, so we decided to make it a two-parter. Enjoy part one, which features my story of odd architecture. This is a comedy podcast and should not be used as a primary source of information. We apologize in advance for offending any tiny persons, the undead, the country of France, and all other minority groups. Information provided should not be considered extensive research. Use as directed. This podcast can burn eyes. Follow application directions exactly. Do not use while sleeping. Safety goggles recommended. Do not eat this podcast. Keep out of reach of children. Never use a lit match or open flame near this podcast. May cause drowsiness. Use care when operating heavy machinery. Avoid placing this podcast in your crotch. Can cause urine to turn black. Once used rectally, this podcast should not be used orally. Loss of the ability to perform or enjoy sex and or painful erections that last for more than four hours are common while listening to this podcast. Other side effects include uncontrollable laughter, choking, fits of hysteria, diarrhea, anal hemorrhaging, constipation, bloating, sleepwalking, hallucinations, frequent alien abduction, excessive gambling, spontaneous combustion, blind spots, distorted vision, halos around lights, hair loss, unwanted hair growth, aggression, antisocial behavior, impulsivity, irritability, anger, anxiety, screaming, or self-harm. But seriously, this show is not for anyone who is easily offended by strong language or graphic content. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. You say, you say? Yes. Uh, yes, we are definitely doing pizza tonight. Shout out to who? Domino's. To Domino's. To Domino's. Shout out to Domino's today. Indeed. Because we we're fucking lazy and we we're supposed to cook a, a blue apron. It would be cool if they sponsored us. Um, Hell yeah, eventually. But we we're fucking lazy and so we got pizza instead. <laughs> it's because you don't sponsor us. Yeah. You don't make it, it convenient. Fucking blue apron motherfuckers <laughs> hashtag we still want you yes <laughs> hashtag we still want you we still want you <laughs> that could apply to so many things well uh first before we get started i definitely want to do a quick shout out to my girl ashley vopat and she is on my list of favorite people right now because mm. she sent me this awesome video of her chilling at her house listening to our podcast on her tv yes loud as could be just killing it so thank you so much you are this week's number one fan absolutely i love you i miss you Mm. yeah that was weird sorry no it was good you have anything today do i have anything to start with i'm just looking at this pizza order to make sure yes make sure that that is all correct it says they're firing it up i like now that it tells you like what's going on with it it's like Fernando is oh my God, cooking it tells your you, pizza, it tells and you who? Julie is putting the toppings on, and oh, now wow. Henry is delivering it. Well, to Henry you. fucked up, so God damn it, Henry. fire him! <laughs> fire him! Uh, are you drinking beer or sake at this point? I'm currently drinking Budweiser, which is really out of character for me. But it was provided from our number one fan a couple oh, weeks back, Troy Mr. Moon. Moon. So thank you. Yes, thank you indeed. And those fucking cans are gigantic. That's excessively tall for a tall boy. Yeah. That's like yeah. a giant boy. Not just a tall boy. <laughs> that boy is giant. He needs to shop at the big and big and tall. Yep. You know, do you know those stores, big and tall? Yeah, I know the big and talls. Yes. They're like the male equivalent of Lane Bryant. Is it? Yeah. So, Aren't they? I guess, but I think like, like big and tall is more for like suits and stuff, isn't it? Well, no, they have. You other just clothes. raise the roots, <laughs> motherfucker. I was gonna say when I say when I think big and tall, I just thought like big giant people you know but lane bryant for whatever reason has that like that plus size you know like why is it different why is it different mm, yeah you know that's so that's so sexist i'm just gonna say it it is sexist i don't care i mean i do care i care but i don't care however that is where we went with that shit hello it's three minutes in and we i just want to make sure you were close enough am i close enough i guess Oh my god, shut up. Oh my god, shut up. Say that. Oh my god, shut up. All right. Yeah. It was something I would never fucking say in my entire life. <laughs> but it makes you like get loud, so This is true. All right. Well, do you want a gross America or would you rather have a discredited disease? 
today? Uh, I want, you know what? Since I was fucking sick all last week. Oh, are you handing it to me? You tell me something. I want a discredited disease. You tell me a discredited disease. Well, I can tell you about my disease, but it's not discredited. (laughs) Get Uh, your roof out your mouth. (laughs) (laughs) All right, for the record, it was hand, foot, and mouth disease, which mostly fucking little children get. Mm -hmm. It's not super common in adults. I always get the weird shit. Like, all the weird fucking shit happens to me. If I, like, hurt something, it's something weird. Like, I dislocated my knee My uvula. (laughs) (laughs) Never that. (laughs) Thank God. (laughs) But, yeah, it was terrible. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, my friend was telling me that her son got it and then she got it subsequently from him. Mm -hmm. Um, He's, you know, in elementary school, so that was going around. Uh, She said he was out for a week and a half and it's going around aggressively. So, yeah. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your husband too. They infected everyone up in here. Mm -mm. Boom. Okay, so I picked this one. Yay! I don't know what it is, but yay! It's like, it mirrors itself. So it's what? called, it's like written backwards. Syndrome, syndrome, except there's like a weird... It's syndrome, syndrome? Yeah, it says, in a very odd doubling or mirroring situation, it would appear that Dr. Andrew J. Wilson has contracted blah, 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 blah. Nope, that's not helpful. We will edit all of that (laughs) out. It's written weird. It like mirrors itself, but there's an apostrophe. Oh, it's syndrome spelled back backwards, and then syndrome. It's yes. backwards spelled syndrome, but the backwards then spelled syndrome. syndrome is with an apostrophe. Yeah, that's S weird. At the end of it, from the Kerguelen Islands of Southern Ocean of the Southern Ocean. First known was Nemo Omen, huh? In 1961, who's a meteorologist. I wonder if that's what Finding Nemo is from. Um, <laughs> He was also 33 years of age. Um, So let's all remember where we were at 33. Oh, wait. Are you 33? Not there yet. Nope. Nope. Just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't well at 33. So I would make shit up like this. Yeah, but you're doing better now. I'm doing so. You would make shit up. So, (laughs) like, I have this syndrome. I have syndrome syndrome. (laughs) Backwards syndrome syndrome. So it's initial mood swings in response to external stresses. Okay, I definitely had this. Uh, (laughs) Followed by mental or physical mimicry and palindromic verbalization. Oh, that's why it's like that. It's like a palindrome, except it's backwards for some reason. So I guess maybe you start talking backwards, maybe? In severe cases, the condition involves corporal corporal That's mutilation. Why? Nope, nope, just kidding. Mutation. It has an apostrophe S because syndrome is almost a palindrome. So that's why they do it like that. Oh. Anyways, sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, that makes sense. Some individuals have been found fused to outcrops of rocks. Their well, it, newly brittle bodies crumbling under their own greatly increased mass, while others have dissolved in water. This can't be. I'm real. so fucking confused right now. Nemo Omen, a member of a French survey team on Kerguelen. I don't know where that is. Oh, it's in the Southern Ocean. Just kidding. Be, uh, began to behave erratically over several months stationed in this ro- ro- remote <laughs> in this remote island group in the southern ocean a barren and inhospitable environment subject to capricious and inclement weather initially omen simply aped his colleagues behavior and <laughs> incessantly impersonated their various accents oh my god that's what that is okay so he's like it's like stop copying me stop copying me oh. that's <laughs> it's literally that that's okay fucking so weird. the the name of the syndrome that your annoying little brother slash sister <laughs> has when she's like he or she is copying you is syndrome syndrome but the first syndrome is backwards 
Uh, the cure is to beat the shit out of your little annoying it, Yeah, sibling. exactly. The remoteness of the location of the only recorded outbreak of this syndrome. So there was only one fucking case. Uh, ha, ha. So he was just crazy. He, yeah, he had like schizophrenia or something. Island fever. Yes. That's all that is. Island fever. Ooh, it says there's a bunch of ambiguous but disturbing photographs. Oh, God. We got to look that up. Check that shit out. Okay, so the first thing that comes up is a man with a semi-automatic. Well, that's not him. That can't be him. Maybe put... Um, syndrome, syndrome. It's still guns. Why is it... <laughs> it's all guns. <laughs> Apparently, you just need... Okay, look it up different. Oh, it's because it's actually... I still don't know why the... F I guess he spells it backwards weirdly still because it looks like a... Because it is a palindrome, but it's actually a Mordney syndrome. So it's so he did do it as a palindrome on purpose, and that's why it's the apostrophe s. Uh, but they now it's, it's a just a bitch a picture of little kids being fucking annoying. Y'all, I don't know, but yes, that's it. That's just your. Uh, I can't hear e you. I can't hear you. I'm not listening. <laughs> I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. All right. So yeah, that's the syndrome for your annoying sibling. Well, that was interesting. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Does you want to go first? Um, that's up to you. You've had a, a pretty rough recording night. Do you? Oh my god, <laughs> go I have first? really. All right. So you're gonna hear some ads later on, and those are a struggle. You're welcome. Rebecca had to record hers like 10 times. 1,600 times. And eight. All because of my fault. All because All of my because fault. All because of your fault. That's a weird <laughs> way of saying yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't defend that. So anyway. All right. Well, I, yes, I will go first because, again, I tend to get drunk by the, <laughs> by the time you get to me. <laughs> so maybe it's a good thing. All right. So this is the Kowloon Walled City. The ca yes, you've never heard of it, I'm sure. Nope. Because I have never in my life. This is also a Jason suggestion. Kowloon was a largely ungoverned, densely populated settlement in Kowloon City, which is within uh, Hong Kong. So it's just like a kind of like in the the non King uh, situation where they set up the um, safe zone. Yeah. That's kind of what this is. It's just an area of land inside of Hong Kong. Okay. So it's a city within a city. Gotcha. The history of the walled city can be traced back to the Song Dynasty, which is 960 through 1279, when an outpost was set up to manage the trade of salt. Little took place for hundreds of years afterward. Although 30 guards were stationed there in 1668. In 1842, Hong Kong Island was ceded to the Brit to the British by the Treaty of Nanjing. Whoa, good old <laughs> Nanjing, Nanjing, Nan King Nanjing. The Convention for the Extension of Hong Kong Territory of 1898 handed additional parts of Hong Kong, aka what they call the New Territories, to Britain for 99 years but excluded the wall city, which at the time had a population of a roughly 700. I actually remember the the celebration that ensued once that 99 years was completed and Hong Kong reverted back to Chinese power. Really? Yeah, I do I totally do. Um, it what? was like it was almost like the 4th of July for them. They were just like pew, pew, pew. So yeah, the that happened in 1997. 97. 19, not even that long ago. Same year as Clueless, I believe. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, hashtag the year I was woke. <laughs> oh, my God. I brought no. that back. I brought that back. All right. So, at that time, it... Um, no, just kidding. All right. So, China was allowed to continue to keep officials there as long as they did not interfere with the defense of British Hong Kong. Though the British claimed ownership over the walled city, they did little with it over the next few decades. It was actually a quite a long time where they did not do anything with it. Russell, 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 the papers. So it was just sitting vacant. The walled city became a mere curiosity for British colonials and tourists to visit. It was labeled 
as Chinese town in a 1915 <laughs> map. So it was basically just, again, like a little safe haven for Chinese people within Hong Kong. Because so, Hong Kong was controlled by the British government. So there's a lot of ex not expats i don't know what they're called but like you know british inhabitants there and like china that's really messed up to have a chinatown inside china yeah but that's how it was <laughs> back in 1915 at least so in 1933 the hong kong authorities announced plans to demolish most of the decaying walled city's buildings compensating for the 436 squatters that live there with their new homes. Holy shit. Actually, with new homes. So, yeah. So, they were trying to uh, demolish it and then move those people into new homes. So, again, uh, 1933, there was 436 squatters. So, they were trying to demolish the homes and move them into new homes in that territory still? Or just, like, get them all... So the walled city, I'm going to show you pictures of it in just a minute. um, And you'll see why they're considered squatters. Mm -hmm. Um, Because they, they're, it's loosely, you could loosely call them homes. Um, It's like they're barely homes. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to get rid of it and move these people into actual homes. So, okay. okay. By 1940, only the Yaman, which is... um, kind of like their um, administrative office Mm -hmm. and a school was the only house that kind of remained in that area so it was a fort and then it was like just a like a fort pickens kind of attraction for the british and then all of a sudden there were people like squatting in there think of like native pensacolians squatting in fort pickens and then all of a sudden they're like yeah we gotta we gotta tear all this down because it's it's getting trashed and sorry (laughs) uh it's getting trashed and it's becoming an eyesore yada yada so and all of the original fort buildings have fallen away leaving only two buildings a administrative (laughs) office and a school all right. So during its World War II occupation, Japan demolished the city's wall and used the stones that they uh, kind of harvested from there to expand the nearby Kai Tak Airport to help them carry in all of their um, supplies. Huh. Its population increased. Yay, the pizza's here. Woo! (laughs) Its population increased dramatically following the Japanese occupation of Hong Kong during World War II. After Japan's surrender in 1945, China announced its intent to reclaim its rights to the walled city. And I know you're like, this is a lot of history, but I promise you (laughs) there's some real interesting stuff coming along. I can imagine. All right, so refugees from mainland China because of the Chinese Civil War, which was around 1945, poured in to take advantage of the British protection of the walled city as, you know, it was surrounded. um, So it's a Chinese territory surrounded by the British controlled land. So they were kind of by de facto protected. Mm -hmm. So by that time, 2,000 squatters occupied the walled city, and that's in 1947. So it went from, what, like 436 to 2,000 squatters? Damn. All right. So after a failed attempt to drive them out in 1948, the following year, the British adopted a hands-off policy in most of the matters concerning the walled city. So basically, govern yourself, just stay out of our way. (laughs) From night. From the 1950s to the 1970s, it was controlled by local triads, gangs, and had high rates of prostitution, gambling, and drug abuse. No way. Our favorites. In January 1950, a fire broke out that destroyed over 2,500 huts. And you'll see why huts in a minute. Home uh, home to nearly 3,000... Okay, so 2,500 huts but nearly home to 3,500 families and 17,000 people. That's a... Do you you hear how sardine can it is? Yeah. All right, so you'll see 
You'll see why. Okay. The ruins gave new arrivals to the walled city the opportunity to build anew, causing speculation that the fire may have been intentionally set so that they could start building new. All right. So I think I have this image queued up. Look at that. Isn't that weird? Like, it looks like some post-apocalyptic society. It really does. Like, like when you see... Like, a bunch of those movies are like that. Mm -hmm. Like, have you seen Ready Player One? It's like a bunch of, like, shipping cartons on top of each other. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of what this looks like. It looks like a mod podge of shipping containers, but they're not shipping. They're not even that sturdy, dude. Yeah. That's fucking terrifying. Like, I would not want to live in one of those. No, but people did. Damn. So, (laughs) all right. So now that's what that looks like. Which we will post, of course. Totally. Absolutely. With no government enforcement from the Chinese or the British, aside from a few raids by the Hong Kong police, the walled city became a haven for crime and drugs. Duh. It was only during a 1959 trial for a murder that occurred within the walled city that the Hong Kong government was ruled to have jurisdiction there. So they weren't even sure who had authority to Holy arrest shit. and prosecute there i know right so people were just doing whatever the fuck they wanted for the most part pretty much damn but in 1959 it was decided all right hong kong the i guess it was the chinese government at the time um you know what the hong kong government i mean at 19 in 1959 that's still british so i guess it's the british government um with chinese support that have the right to prosecute there by this time however the walled city was virtually ruled by the organized 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 the organized the organized crime syndicates known as the triads do 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 triads (laughs) i don't know what that was i it was good forgive me beginning in the 1950s triad groups such as 14k and sun yi on gained a stranglehold on the walled city's countless blah, 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 countless <laughs> <laughs> it's all the pizza countless brothels gambling parlors and opium dens sounds about right sounds about right that's the place i would go for that shit yeah the walled cities had become such a haven for criminals that police would venture into it only in large groups like we're only doing raids. We're not say, going one I'd at a time. I'd be fucking terrified to go into that shit. Like, we're going to have to go in like the army. Ugh. It was not until 1973 slash 74 when a series of more than 3,500 police raids resulted in over 2,500 arrests and over 4,000 pounds of seized drugs. Jesus Christ. So the triad's power began to, to wane. So they really hit it hard during that year. Damn. The public's, oh, excuse me, with public support, particularly from younger residents, the continued raids gradually eroded drug use and violent crime. By 1983, the police commander of uh, Kowloon City District declared the walled city's crime rate to be under control. Hmm. Very good. The year before I was born. (laughs) Thank God. By 1990, the walled city... Me too. Yes. By 1990, the walled city contained 50,000 residents. So we went from like 700 to 50,000 in like 40 years. What the fuck? Are they just all going there because they want to like get high and fuck bitches? Well, there's reasons, but that's probably nah, that's not all. Maybe a, like a quarter of them did it for that reason, but there are there are definitely extenuating circumstances that I think I'm pretty sure will be explained further on. <laughs> um, and that's all within a 6.4 acre area. Like I don't oh know much God. about acres, but that's not that big, you know. No, not a, no. That's tiny. No wonder why the buildings are just like stacks on stacks like y'all i'm from texas and i'm pretty sure that's not even enough for like you know like a stable of horses like <laughs> no that's 6. true 6.4 acres i think y'all need like more than that for for livestock you know just like a small group of livestock but you got fifty thousand residents in that square mile square mileage you know what i'm saying that's awful acreage can you imagine how many people like 
lived in one of those ghetto ass right remember what i said together? remember when i said where was that statistic 2500 huts which was nearly 3500 families and 1700 people so 1700 people and 2500 butt butts Ugh. butts butts <laughs> so many butts though lots of butts <laughs> 17,000 to be exact. <laughs> 17,000 butts in a 6.4 acre border. <laughs> but <laughs> that's literally what I wrote. <laughs> this isn't planned. This is all improv. Uh, but the city also and underwent massive construction during the 1960s, which developers... Oh, excuse me. With developers building new modular structures above older ones. So between that time, by the time of 1990, they had um, uh, people building mm -hmm. um, like a, a extreme boom. So the city became extremely dense. And as, as it, if it wasn't already, <laughs> well, leading to the 50,000, um, densely populated with over 30,000 people in 300 buildings occupying a little more than seven acres. So, yeah. Jesus okay. Christ. So that's 1960, 30,000. And then by 1990, 50,000. Yeesh. As a result, the city reached its maximum maximum size by the late 70s uh, and early 80s. So I guess by 70s, 80s. So 1960s, 30,000 people. Se they started. They continued building. 70s, 80s. It, it hit five fifty thousand, and the seven less than seven acres. Mm -hmm. um, at the height restriction of 13 to 14 stories, and that was imposed because of flight path paths for the planes heading towards the Kai Tak airport. So they could, they would have gone higher than 13 to 14 stories, but they couldn't because the city was like, nah, we got planes. Well, thank God, man. Oh. It probably would have just all fucking fallen down. <laughs> so if you're living in these shacks, because they are pretty much shacks. They they're are. Not, they're not luxury apartments. Um, if you're living in shacks, you're, why are you concerned about people's flights? Cause you're probably not taking any flights yourselves, you know, like I'll be like, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about your goddamn flights going to Aruba or <laughs> Fiji or America. Anyway, eight municipal pipes provided water to the entire structure, Ugh. which doesn't sound like a lot. No. Although more could have come from wells, so they could have uh, mm. dug for wells. A few of the streets were illuminated by fluorescent lights, um, and that's the ground level streets, as sunlight rarely reached the lower levels due to the outstanding disregard to air rights within the city. I don't know what that means. So it's just because they were so tall, the sunlight couldn't get down right, to them. But I guess in there, I don't know if that's like um, an architectural thing, mm -hmm. but sunlight and air have to be accessible in some capacity for it to be okay. deemed humanly inhabitable. Right. They did not care about that. No so they fucks had given. barely some halogen lights at the bottom of the thing and definitely no fresh air. That is so scary. Like, I know. Ugh. I know. All right. So, but... Although the rampant crime of earlier decades diminished, diminished, nope, diminished in later years, the walled city was still known for its high number of unlicensed doctors and dentists. No, yep, <laughs> who could operate there without threat of prosecution, kind of like Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was told when I lived in Chicago, y'all. When I lived in Chicago, I told one of my um the people that I worked with that that I was moving to Florida and they were like, Oh, don't get a doctor or a lawyer there. That's where they all go to, to <laughs> practice when they can't practice anywhere anywhere else. And I was like, Well that's fun. Great. Can't wait. Health insurance. Yay. <laughs>
Hey everyone, thanks for listening. We need your feedback, likes, subscribes, and comments. Tell us what you think by emailing us at it's all gone terribly wrong at gmail.com, no apostrophe. Reach out to us on Facebook at Gone Wrong Podcast or on Instagram at It's All Gone Terribly Wrong. You can also find our episodes on iTunes by following our RSS feed guide found on Facebook or on our Lipson website at it's all gone terribly wrong dot com and by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Also, please, please, please sign up for our Patreon page and donate to our beard and weird obsessions. Did you just say beard? Is it beard? You want to say it again? No, I thought you said beard and weird. Do you take some beards? Beards and weirds. <laughs> Love, Love you. Ooh. Okay, done. Hey, we love featuring local musicians. If you're a band or solo artist, please send us a MP3 file of your favorite original song. Tell us about yourselves and any upcoming show dates we can promote. Send your info to it's all gone terribly wrong at gmail.com. No apostrophe. Boom. Boom. Uh, although the walled city was for many years a hotbed of criminal activity, most of the residents were not involved in cr- any crime and lived peacefully within its walls. What? Yes, and it's true. Numerous small factories, like uh, factories and small businesses, thrived within the walled city, and some residents formed groups to organize and improve daily life there. So after a while, they were like, you know what, this is a legit thing. It's like a neighborhood. They formed a neighborhood watch and like a committee to help improve living conditions there. It took them long enough. I know, right? <clears throat> An attempt by the government in 1963 to demolish the, some shacks in a corner of the city gave a rise to an anti-demolition dem- committee. So that's when that started, was in 1963. And it served as the basis for a Kai Fong Association. Don't know what that means. I didn't write the note for it, so... <laughs> That's what they called themselves, I assume. Okay. Charities, religious societies, and other welfare groups were gradually introduced into the city. While while medicinal clinics and schools went unregulated, the Hong Kong government (laughs) did provide some services, such as those eight water pipes to supply the water. (laughs) They also delivered their mail. So that's fun. Oh. What is your address at that point? (laughs) What is your address? Like that doesn't. I'm hut number five. You guys have north, to like on the third level, two pipes picture. down from the halogen light. Like, like, what is your address at that How point? How do you even get up those fucking? Like, it's literally just like little boxes on top of each other for like 13 floors hey glad you asked there's a Ah, video there's a video (laughs) yeah it's like from early 1990s that show it's like somebody that walks through the thing Mm -hmm. and they show like they'll show the dentist's office the like there's i think there's a shoe factory um yeah the halogen lights the dripping water that i'm going to mention um yeah there's there's a whole tour basically of the city and i'll post the link to that um youtube video just like Definitely. sketchy staircases kind of yeah oh yes yes Are you burping into your hair <laughs> I'm trying to burp into my hair <laughs> just yes. let it go yes all right So, over time, both the British and the Chinese governments found the city to be increasingly intolerable, despite the reduction in reported crimes. Yeah, your crime is gone, but you're still kind of a ghetto, so we want to get rid of that. Kind of. Because Hong Kong is like one of the, like, the hoity-toity cities, you know? Right. They're big city, so it's like New York, and they're like, "Mm, Harlem, we don't like you, so we're going to reinvent you. We're going to knock you down and... Gentrification. Gentrify you. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking that. So um, a mutual decision by the two governments uh, was, uh, hold on, the mutual decision by the two governments to tear down the walled city was announced in January of 1987. I got five pages, ten pages of notes. Great. <laughs> but we're halfway through. Nearly done. Yeah, you're doing good. The government distributed some 350 million U.S. dollars in compensation to the estimated 33,000 residents that were still there and businesses in a plan devised by a special committee of the Hong Kong Housing Authority. 
So by that time, there was only 33,000. Some of those people were like moving on up <laughs> to the east side of Hong Kong. Some residents were not satisfied with the compensation they were for and were forcibly. Oh my God, why can't I say this word? And were forcibly <laughs> evicted between November 1991 and July 1992. After four months of planning, demolition of the walled city began in March of 1993 and concluded April of 1994. Womp, womp, womp. Good. So they took, they tore it all down. Dude, it's so terrifying looking. I, <laughs> I can't get over it. Construction work on the Kowloon Walled City Park started the following month. So the Kowloon Wall City Park opened in December of 1995 and occupies the area of the former Walled City. Some historical artifacts from the Walled City, including the Yamin, aka the, the government office, and the remains of its south gate have been preserved. A few of the people who spent time in Kowloon Walled City have written accounts of their experiences. That'd be pretty cool to read. Sawchaz, evangelist, Jackie Pollinger. I'm not even sure. That doesn't sound... Doesn't sound Chinese. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe she married. There you go. Um, or he. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> this person wrote a 1989 memoir called Crack in the Wall. Oh, it is a her. About her involvement in treating drug addicts within the walled city. So maybe she was, I didn't read that far into it, and she is a, like a social worker, something, humanitarian worker. I like that play on words. What did I say? Crack in the wall. Oh, I know, right? Crack, because they were <laughs> dealing in drugs. Yeah. But it was mostly opium, so oh. I think, I don't know, they could have had crack. Crack is whack. It was the 80s. Crack is whack. Whitney Houston, rest in peace. In <laughs> also in his 2004 autobiography, Guilo Martin Booth, I don't even know, describes his exploration of the walled city as a child in the 1950s. So like that's the height of the effed upness, which is so that must that has to be a good read. Oh, for sure. So that was a lot of uh, history and facts, but here's some even funner facts. Funner. <laughs> At its peak, it was estimated to have 50,000 residents, giving it a population density of almost 120 times greater than New York City. Jesus Christ. Right? And it's way smaller than New York City. Yeah, way <laughs> smaller. Way. Oof. As the city's population grew, people kept building on top of existing structures Dude. until they hit that, that What was the airline. appeal? Just because it... <clears throat> well, it's because they had... Oh, well, here. The city's <laughs> eventual... No, the city eventually had 300 interconnected high-rise buildings that had been construction room by room without the help of architects and building codes. Oh, that sounds very accurate. I don't know about... Picture. Yes. I don't know about Chinese um, bureaucracy, but I know in Chicago, you have to have a, per a permit for anything. You want to cut your grass? Get a permit. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. It's freaking ridiculous. And you got to pay a, lo a lot of money. So I assume that that was the appeal. You could just build that is with so sketch. You could find a tree, chop it down yourself, and build a house, and not have to pay any government Ugh. about you know whatever taxes. Blah blah blah. Um, the architecture of Kowloon Wall City was haphazard. Yeah, rising vertically with such narrow alleyways on the interior that sunlight rarely penetrated to the street level. Hence the halogen lights. I honestly can't believe it didn't just like implode words on itself. I yeah, know, right? like what the fuck? I mean, yeah, they didn't have architects or uh, building codes, but it, room by room, it lasted for like forty years in, like in that crazy. condition. So at least, so I mean, you know, they knew something. Blah. I mean, the mafia was uh, their the Asian mafia was involved. So I don't know because they know how to build shit. <laughs> no, but they got the money to hire people that know okay, that, fair how enough. to build. Fair Enough. or at least pay them off <clears throat> okay so people would carry umbrellas when using <laughs> the alleyways because the pipes constantly dripped onto the pedestrians Blah. there's video of that Blah. 
children climb to the rooftops to play. <gasps> so because it's so densely populated and vertically um, organized and like oh, I said, yeah, there's no have somewhere space to go. in the middle. God, that's so terrifying. The tops came, the tops so of the buildings sketch. became their like gardens and their like free roaming space. I'd be fucking pissed if I was on the top and you just heard those little assholes running <laughs> around. <laughs> they had their brooms like, shut up. <laughs> <clears throat> many apartments nope many interior apartments had no windows at all like how could you live like even the high up ones yeah the interior ones i mean i guess it would have oh, skylights no windows the top level. i was just levo. i was just th- <laughs> you said no windows and i just immediately thought like just no glass so they're just like hanging out <laughs> i was <laughs> yeah, that wasn't right. Okay. <laughs> no. So the interior buildings had no windows or so they were just really like wall to wall. Living like in a box. You got one neighbor, another neighbor, another neighbor, another <sighs> a hall and another neighbor. Fuck that, man. <laughs> I know, right? It's like the worst. It's like the next up on by UWF. There's just like no windows. Uh, Have you been there? Nope. Oh, okay. Never mind. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> it's, um, it's the apartment complex that they built for UWF. Um, students. It's basically like dorms. What's honestly. it called? The, it's called the Next. N e x t. Next. Uh, I don't know. They look really nice, and they're, um, but they're you don't get to choose your roommates. Oh fuck that! I know, right? No way. I know, right? Like you could have you could have three people living in this one apartment, which they're really nice, and they offer you, they um, they're fully furnished, and they have amenities and stuff. But um, Still not you don't worth it. you don't get to choose your roommates. Um, I think you can choose male male or female female, but otherwise Still. you don't. Yeah, and every time I've gone there, very few times, but I've gone enough to be like, why is it always smell like weed in these hallways? Oh, go <laughs> oh, wait, it. it's a college town. <laughs> Uh, duh. All right. So the high rises were so interconnected that you could travel from one side of the city to the other without touching the ground. Instead, you just pass through the corridors and across the rooftops. Mm-mm. Yeah. Some residents living on the upper levels considered the rooftops as sanctuary. I bet parkour people parkour. love that shit. Oh my god. <laughs> that is like park. That's where parkour happened, like started. I'm pretty sure. I believe it. Um, so they considered the top levels a sanctuary because the rest of it was kind of claustrophobic, you know, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, rooftops were often used for exercise and playgrounds. They were also used for pigeon racing. What? <laughs> and then the residents would gamble on it like horse races. Yes. Pigeon racing. <laughs> What if they just flew away and never came back? Who How wins? does that work? Do they just like fly from one side of the building to the other? And I guess. Eh. You know what? That happens in New York. They do. They have like a bunch of people that like train pigeons. And then they. I have heard that. Right? Yeah. It's weird. I don't even know. Like birds have such small brains. I didn't think that that was even possible. Huh? I'm going to train my cats how to do. <laughs> messenger cat. Right? <Yes! laughs> going to do it. Going to find that. Um. Okay, but the rooftops could also be dangerous. No and, way. Yes, <laughs> because they were ill, uh, poorly designed. What? And uh, some small gaps between the buildings would allow people to <gasps> just fall right through them. No. Uh-huh. Also, due to the lack of garbage collection, some residents uh. carried their bulky junk items to the roof. So that became not just a playground, but like a dumping ground. Everything about this is terrible. This doesn't sound right, you know? As a result, many of the rooftops were cluttered with discarded mattresses, broken furniture, and appliances. (laughs) During, nope, in 1959, during a murder trial, a judge ruled that the Hong Kong government... Oh, I already read that one. Sorry. By that point... Oh, damn it. This is all repeated information. Anyway, reportedly, many officers, police officers, still turned a blind eye to activities in the city, even though they had jurisdiction, uh, either as a result of bribes or because it was just too dangerous. I was going to say, there's just so much shit going on there. You don't want to... It got... I mean, they shouldn't have let it get that out of hand in the first place. It sounds like a New York inside of a New York inside of a New York. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) exactly. 
despite high crime rates in the city, most residents were ordinary, law-abiding citizens, which I already said, blah, blah, blah. There were a variety of legitimate businesses uh, and inst institutions in the city. Interestingly, many of them had to share space. So, for, ex <laughs> for example, there were schools and hair salons that were converted into strip clubs and gambling halls at night. So by day, your kids would go in there, your wives would get their hair done, their hair did, and then at night, the husbands would go in and watch the, go into the titty bars and gamble. Word. Where are there? Oh, let me just put my um, my cigarettes in my little kid's cubby hole. That's fine. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe the strippers got a deal then. They get their hair done during the day and then right. go strip. You're right. Maybe the hoping... strippers were also the hairdressers. Oh, that's a good point. You know what? I was hoping you'd say there's like a gynecologist's office with like a pet store. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to send this like gerbil up in there the to day. check everything yeah. out. Gross. <laughs> Here, hold this kitten to calm you. Oh, I... that makes better sense. <laughs> what I said was gross. <laughs> no, no. Awesome. I, I like the direction you took with it. Let me stick a gerbil up you to find out what's going to do your pap smear. Ugh. No, I'd rather hold a kitten while I'm getting a pap smear than have a gerbil inside me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm really glad for that. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Oh, God. Uh, I don't think you'd do this podcast with me if I was that kind of person. Maybe you would. I don't know. We'll see. Different strokes for different folks, man. That's right. No judgment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a judgment-free zone. All right. So one of the ways that residents cooperated to improve the city was by creating their working water system. So they had the eight um, city uh pipes but then they had to dig their own wells and build thousands of other pipes that would wind through the city and the buildings just haphazardly as it was mentioned earlier um, the pumping of the water though required a lot of electricity and so the residents took turns conserving power so that the water could be shared successfully that's cooperation. Like a rolling blackout kind, kind of, of thing. but like a willing rolling. That's insane. I don't know how willing it is if it's controlled by tri uh, triads. Yeah. They're probably like, all right, use use guys. Use guys. I put uh, they're, they're <laughs> Chinese, but I'm putting them with a with an <laughs> East Coast accent. Use guys are not going to have power for like three days. But that's so everyone can have water. Yeah, it was a terrible accent. I'll work on that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that's a fun sound the tryouts the triads also worked with residents and acted as a kind of city council uh -huh. as they settled disputes between businesses organized a garbage garbage <laughs> organized a garbage disposal system and created a volunteer fire department what i mean you gotta have someone damn again it's like you you and you you're a fire department <laughs> Well, I mean, I think it got to the point where it was just so shitty. They were like, all right, well, we have to fucking do something. Yeah, someone's got to do something. After being for forcibly evicted, the residents found new homes, but many of them said that their experience living in the walled city were a happier time. That is so bizarre. I know, right? To be evicted from this seeming shithole yeah. uh, to government-funded houses and you're like, not nah, was better back in the shithole. Because I guess they could do whatever the fuck they wanted and probably didn't have to, like, work a lot, but you're still just on top of people, and it's fucking gross. And Yeah. You have makeshift sewers and makeshift water and rolling blackouts so that you can have water. Yeah, I couldn't do that. I know, right? Like, how bad does government housing have to be, like... $350 million, by the way, is what they spent to re rehouse these people. Holy shit. $350 million U.S. dollars. That's so fucking crazy. And they still couldn't do as well as this six-acre shithole. That's insane. I don't know. Something about these triads. They, they got it right somehow. <laughs> All right. Some argue that the walled city was an example of how people can work together and agree, agree, achieve great things. Which I agree. Sure. Oh, Colts did that too. Like, you're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Colts did that too. 
Some people say that the residents came up with novel solutions to their pro problems and created a city that was self-sufficient without needing guidance or an overall plan. Mm -hmm. However, they did admit to having like committees. So, and they had some sort of forward planning. If they designed a pipe system and all that. Yeah. I mean, so that's kind of a loose comment. Uh, depictions of the walled city have appeared in a variety of pop culture media, which by the, when you said, um, it reminds you of a ready player one. Yeah. So I don't think it was in that one, but definitely a lot of, um, pop culture references. I could see that for sure. So it appeared in a variety of pop culture media from Batman begins to call of duty black ops. Of course. All right. So a um, Jackie Chan movie, Crime Story, which was released in 1993, the filmmaker set off explosions in one of the city's abandoned buildings. Damn. Yeah. And where is are there abandoned buildings in 1993? I like with all those residents. Like, what part of that is abandoned? <laughs> right. You know. Other examples of pop culture uh, include the movie Bloodsport, as it features a martial arts tournament that takes place there. Hmm. Also, like I said, Batman Begins. There's a dilapidated neighborhood in Gotham called the Narrows, which is based on the walled city. Huh. Boom. The city has also been featured in a range of video games, including Call of Duty Black Ops, Hitman, Shin Mu, I don't know, uh. 2. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Shin Mu 2 and Kowloon's Gate. Kowloon's Gate. There is also a game currently in development or was currently in development called HK Project probably Hong Kong project where players control a cat as it explores the wall city. I know, right? That's I how I wanted to end that. I want that game. Let's find it. Oh Let's my God. You're a cat exploring this amazing cat friendly city. Well, shit. Now Maybe I have not. to buy a PlayStation or what? I don't even, it, I didn't say, I didn't say. We got to figure that out. It didn't say where, what uh, console that's on. But. What's it called? <laughs> HK Project, probably short for Hong Kong Project. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So that is the Kowloon World City. That is fucking incredible. I No one died. I thought there's a... Oh, oh, overall. You're right. God damn it. There was a murder. One, Psh, one murder. No way. There had to be so many more murders than that. They probably just dropped the bodies in between the little spaces You're of the right. buildings. They used them as insulation. Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't just uh, go into, like, weird detail about a murder. No, no, that was good. I tried to, leave, you know, mix it up a bit. Especially since Troy was giving a shit for talking about only dark stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, we're a podcast of absurdities, oddities, and obscenities. Oh, yeah, so. we didn't say that at the beginning. Hello, welcome to... <laughs> <laughs> it's all gone terribly <laughs> With Rebecca Carlson and Jordan, <laughs> Jordan Stock. Stock. Oh, I thought you were going to pause and let me say your name. Well, I you said the other thing. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> Remember the last time when you were like, say my name. I know, and you waited and <laughs> nothing <didn't>. happened. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to. Well, was I didn't know if you had it that time. So I was just glad you said the, the words because. Correctly. Yes. In the order that yes. they are meant to be said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is episode eight, so. I mean, we're not doing too bad. No. We're doing so good. So good. So good. So good. We're going to do something special for episode 10. Ooh, yeah, for sure. Um, I think that might be our New Year's episode. No, no way. No way. Just kidding. Episode 9, 10. No, we're so far from that. Yeah. December 12th. That is my old anniversary with my <laughs> ex-husband. Oh, gross. So. so we should definitely do something fun then. <laughs> yeah, it's party all the time. Fuck Yeah. All right. Well, that was mine. You're welcome. That was wonderful. That was my mind is blown. Like right? I just don't understand these pictures. You guys have to look at these pictures. I'm gonna have. It's so weird. Like it's very bothersome to me. There's like this is like the timeline. That's the old city. And oh god damn it. Oh yeah, this is the one I wanted. So this is um 500 buildings courtyard. They had a courtyard at that point. And then this is what kind of what it looked like. 
I'm gonna post these for sure. They made it look a lot happier looking. You're in right the more recent with the bright ones. colors. There's no and fucking all that. way in hell though it was that happy. Mm-mm. Nope. But I'll show all these. Um, oh, this is throughout the decades. So this is 19 or 1898. So this is what the fortress looked like. So it just keeps going. On 1950. It's just kind of like it's still one level ish, and then they start like by 1973. There's a few stories. 1990. There's like. 18 stories I like and the fresh start one I know, it's just right? all foliage a fresh start it's now <laughs> just a garden so i'll post all these pictures so you can enjoy you them back real quick to the pictures these ones no the google search pictures yeah that's terrifying this and is 1986 kind of gross looking and so remember that china has this huge smog issue right so that's the tinge of the color of this this particular we'll go ahead and save this picture what was i going to say oh i went to get gas for the first time yesterday and i'm not used to it like being on the other side no well okay for f- first i pulled in and didn't know what side it was on so i had to like get out before i went to the pump and figure that out Ooh. and then i pulled up and I'm not used to it, like, being the automatic one. I'm used to just, like, pulling oh, right. it open. So I yeah. walked over there. It was just like, like the fuck do I get it open? what the fuck do <laughs> I do? So I had to go back in my car and sit there and, like, YouTube Google it. it to oh, figure no. I felt so fucking stupid. That's Because I was, like, looking for the little latch to open it and couldn't <laughs> find it. I didn't expect it. It was, like, down super low. Mm-hmm. With your, it's either pop the trunk or pop yeah. the gas. Yeah, same with mine. I felt so fucking dumb. Hey, fun fact. Um, most cars after 1996, I think, have, okay, so your indicator, your gas indicator, will mm-hmm. have a picture of, uh, like, a, a gas pump, and then there's going to be an arrow on one side or the other. So the arrow points to whatever side of your car your gas pump your um gas tank is what check your car girl check your car what so if your arrow is on the left side your your gas tank uh what do you call that the opening the gas tank yeah your gas tank i your just gas on the left. gas tank when i looked for it that's incredible yes so now you know which side to pull in on yes so they do that I guess because you know people are buying new cars also for rentals that's a very important tool for if you're somewhere uh, oh, with a rental sure. yeah and it's not your normal car well the more you know why what? is that even a thing I guess because they I mean they build all cars differently but is it really that fucking difficult to like make all the gas tanks on one side uh, I'm not a car engineer well, I'm not a car architect you should be the band we have today is called King Rest, and they are a three-piece extreme metal band from the Pensacola Navarre area. They formed in about 2012, and their influences are Yob, The Locust, Sleepy Time, Gorilla Museum, and the Dillinger Escape Plan. So if you like those bands, you'll definitely like these, oh, these yeah. guys. Um, they're currently in the studio... Uh, working on their seventh EP, and the expected release date is Christmas 2019, so in about a year. Um, but you can check them out on Bandcamp, and we will definitely we will list their Bandcamp information in our show notes. And the song that they are playing is Skin Jammers. Skin Jammers. Skin Jammers. Skin Jammers. Skin Jammers. <laughs> King okay. Rest. So this is King Rest and their song.
hold a kitten while I'm getting a pap smear than have a gerbil inside me. <laughs> <laughs>